so an interesting figure is Dietrich von Hildebrand. Yes. Um, and he, so what's very interesting about him is first of all, if I recall, I think Husserl is the one who converts him. So Husserl and Scheller are these existentialist philosophers. You probably know more about that. I can't understand these philosophers, but <clears throat> they're, so they're these early philosophers in the 1910, 20, 30s, 40s. And they're basically, uh, as existentialism, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's existentialism philosophy wise is basically uh, sort of living in the moment and experiencing life, uh, the experience experientially. Um, and that's what brings truth. You want to help define yeah, that? I mean, the existentialists would say, you know, our experience is what we are. So traditionally, as Catholics, we would say, no, we were form and matter, we have an essence that God has assigned to us. Human nature has its essence and that's what defines us and who we are, right? And of course, our finality is determined by our choices and how we live, right? That's the right. finality. But, you know, modern man rejects that we have a soul. It rejects that we have a finality. So everything that we're doing and experiencing now in this, in this second, is it defines what we are there is no essence there is no form there is no soul it's what you're doing now it's right it's kind of like yolo you only live once <laughs> right that, it's, yeah, it's yolo 24 7 every second live in the now live for the moment that's, yeah, that's existential existential so yeah. so dietrich von hildram is is this uh german convert to catholicism and he gets schooled with the all these um existentialists and so he gets into them and similar to the nouvelle Teologie, um the uh feather in his plume is that he's he immediately denounces the nazis in germany he's he's the hammer of the nazis he gets put out he gets condemned to death in absentia but what happens is he he's dealing with some of the new stuff but at vatican ii during vatican ii according to his widow uh he he knew the writing on the wall in 1965, he had a private audience with Paul VI, and he said he he asked Paul VI to condemn all of these heresies that were already rampant before the council was even closed, and he he begged Paul VI to condemn these heresies, and so Paul VI said, "Okay, write it down." So then he goes home and writes down all these heresies and anathema and whatnot. He brings it back to Paul VI, and Paul VI says, "That's too harsh." Yeah. That's too harsh. So he decides not to do that. And Dietrich von Hildebrand, basically, before that, he was a he was a big name. They say that P Pius XII called him the 20th century doctor of the church. They say. I haven't seen that confirmed in sources, but he's basically a big, a very big name, but he doesn't really go along with the Nouvelle Theologie, even though he does have a lot of interaction with the existentialists. So he sees the writing on the wall. And immediately he starts writing. He writes, uh, I think, three more books. There's uh, Trojan Horse, The City of God. Great book. Uh, yeah. Trojan Horse, there's uh, there, 1973 is uh, Destruction, uh, or what is it? Uh, the Vineyard of the Lord, Destruction of the Vineyard of the Lord. I can't remember the title. but um, And then this is, this is a really good book. This is The Charitable Anathema, Dietrich von Hillebrand. Um, and in this book, he actually describes how he had an interaction with Teilhard de Chardin, where he just... He just uh, condemned him to his face, and uh, nice. so this is a great man, Dietrich von Hildebrand. So, so what's interesting about him is that he, um, he, I think he brings sort of a, a moderate face to it because, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's any good. I mean, I don't know if there's any good to be taken out of the existentialist. Maybe there is somewhere. I don't know, but he basically is sort of. Uh, he says, okay, yeah, we can. Uh, one of the things I've I've read in I think Trojan Horse was was um, wanting Vatican II to balance out certain emphases where certain parts of the faith were just sort of emphasized to the exclusion of other parts of the faith. So he was hoping that it would be more of a, you know, a moderating balancing of, of the faith. Um, and so, but, but he becomes this, uh, one of the big voices in the traditionalist movement right away, because he's, he condemns the new mass. His, his famous quote, uh, from the destruction of the vineyard is, uh, if, if C.S. Lewis is, if one of the devils from C.S. Lewis could have been taken a hold of the new mass, they wouldn't have done a better job than Bunini did. He says this. And so he, he's very critical of the new mass. He loves the Latin mass. He defends it. Um, so he's this great figure, I think, um, who is one of the progenitors of the 
of the uh, traditionalist movement. I think he dies in 78, if I recall. Um, 77. 77, okay. Right. So he's a great a great author. I really like reading him because he's he's right there in the beginning, right in the 60s and the 70s. Well, um, what I like about him is very early on, he's one of the ones sounding the alarm on infiltration. He's saying the church is being infiltrated by communists. Oh, yeah. You know, he meets, uh, he's met with Bella Dodd. So he not only has diagnosed uh, the 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 problem he's looked into the cause right and, yeah. and he's, he's looking back he's already identified bunini i mean he's already identified the problems with the new mass he writes about it he's i mean the fact that he this is this is interesting timothy uh do you have the book uh trojan horse in front of you can you i don't have no okay i, I, had I don't to have it, in front it on of archive.org either, but, it's so he print, he writes yeah. this book and it's kind of an embarrassment to the um, you know, neoconservative John Paul II, Ratzigerian, uh, Bennett the Sixteenth, EWTN, Bishop Barron movement because they like Dietrich von Hildebrand. But he wrote this book basically saying that Vatican II was a Trojan horse brought into the church for its destruction. That book's hard to find. They don't talk about it. Yeah, it's um I there was something that I mentioned when I reviewed Infiltration on 1 Peter 5, I pointed out that the, because all these critics of yours were just sort of dismissing you as, as the conspiracy theorist. And what's right. great about Dietrich von Hildebrand is that you can just say, um, cause this is, so this is, this is a quote from Ratzinger. Okay. This is Ratzinger talking about Hildebrand. He says, I am personally convinced that when at some time in the future, the intellectual history of the Catholic church in the 20th century is written, the name of Dietrich von Hildebrand will be the most prominent among the figures of our time, end quote. So he's praising this man. Right. And then in 1973, von Hildebrand's just like, well, we've got communist and Freemasonic infiltrators in the church, yes. 1973. Yeah. I mean, he, it's he's very clear, on he says. point. He's, <laughs> he's saying, I guess the reason why traditionalists don't take up Dietrich von Hildebrand as much as maybe they should is because he wasn't like consistent rock rib Thomist. True. Yeah, he, he wasn't as much of a Tom Thomas, really. Yes. That's that's so. And and honestly, I mean, I I, I kind of get uh oh, I want to back up a little bit here. But when I read the man's words about Vatican II theology, the Mass, and all that, he's on point. Yeah, I love his writing. His yeah. writing is is so. If if y'all excellent. can get a copy of what's his, Trojan Horse in the City of God, isn't that the name of the book title? Yeah, I can tell you the. I mean. As far as I know, I was only able to get it at archive.org, and you have to actually reserve it, and so you rent it out. That's how I read it. I bought it a out. copy used. You got a copy. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, I bet you could find downstairs. it. I don't know. If- I should have. I should have. I didn't know we could go so much into Dietrich von Hildebrand, <laughs> but I I bought a a copy of it used. Okay, here's here's the full title. I just found the title. It's Trojan Horse in the City of God: The Catholic Crisis Explained. Nineteen sixty seven. I mean, I mean, it's it's incredible, and it's a great book. It has a picture of a the tr- of a horse being drawn into the city. That's the version I have, and he's already identified the bad theology, the bad liturgy, and Vatican II as a problem. Yeah, he doesn't really explicitly condemn Vatican II in that book as much as he does in private. Um, mm-hmm. I know that there's some letters that between him and Michael Davies where he just says. Vatican II was a great misfortune, yes. um, but that I mean that that book basically it says it all with the Trojan horse. Um, and there's there's a, there's a PDF of the devastated devastated vineyard um, that I that I linked here on the on the this article on your book uh, months ago, but that's that's online somewhere. PDF of that devastated vineyard. Um, but yeah, I, great writer. <clears throat> yeah. So if, if, you, if I'm looking right now to see if there's even copies and I, I can't find any copies. So it's that's that's the point I'm bringing up is is yeah. everyone is in the you know John Paul II, Ratzinger, Ignatius Press, EW10, they like Dietrich von Hildebrand. They're embarrassed about this book and that's why you can't get this book. Right. You, you and you don't and 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 uh what I'm saying about that is that you don't have to you know, be be branded as some kind of crazy conspiracy theorist because you can just take von Hildebrand because they all love him and he, yeah. he's a mainstream guy. You know, so yeah. he's not 
He's not some, you know, he's, you can't, you can't name drop Lefebvre and, and, you <laughs> yeah, know, if you're like, go, well, go Lefebvre wrote this book. That. They're like, oh, Lefebvre writes. Those guys are mean. It says Maddox. But yeah, you yeah. bring out Trojan Horse in the City of God. DJ Gavon Hill, like, well, you know, that wasn't his best book. You know, we don't, we don't really <laughs> emphasize that book. You know, we don't re reprint that book. We don't make that book available, but it's a good book. Right. 